Ooh, what's up TBU fans and of course welcome to our week 5 battle against Danny or the Munchlax United and before of course say anything else make sure to go check out uh, Danny's channel or King Bub he's linked down below of course a, a, an amazing content creator if anything you know upcoming youtuber so it's really fun having guys like these in the league if anything and if you see my team analysis you know that this was pretty much the team I was expecting and I was expecting to some extent drug all the uh, in case of, of course, Crocodile Infernape, it was between those three. Not seeing Dragaldi, kind of nice, because that means that my Guard of War is somewhat effective and my Volcano is not hardly that walled for this specific match. Now, I do have Earthquake in case that was going to happen. So, it's a waste of a move, but at the same time, it's a proper move to have in case of, really. So, uh, basically, for Volcano to pretty much win this game, all I need to do is to get Rotom out of the way. And there should be very little issues with me here, actually. Um, and I, from his team here, I kind of feel he's going to lead off with possibly Skarmory for Rocks or Infernape to just get momentum and Pivot. So, um, what I'm going to do is lead off with Ponderous, pretty much faking a Scarf here, hoping that if he leads with Infernape, I can force it out first turn. And yeah, that's pretty much the size of things. Like I said, get Rodan gone, and my Volcano should pretty much sweep this team because my Scissor has Agility Pass after all. And of course, Defog, because Defog is really something I need for, of course, that pesky Skarmory, because rocks cannot be on the field throughout this match. So, with all that said, let's go! So, I predict Ryder at the start, because he's gonna lead up with Infernape, and he's gonna feel that, you know, I could be Scarfed. So, it's a good prediction on his side if that were the case. So, he's gonna switch out. Like I said before, I have actually leftovers, and it's mostly because if I don't get rid of rocks properly, at least I have some fashion of recover myself from it. So I'll just go for Thunderbolt. I don't pack Sludge from this. I have actually Grass Knot and Psychic to get with Nasty Plot. I do get the Paralyzation here, which is kind of nice. Uh, but I should probably have gone for Psychic from the get-go, seeing that that would be an easy way for me of actually faking my possible Scarf. Now, obviously, I have Psychic, which means I showcase that I'm not Scarf, and that's a 50% hit. And we reduce, of course, his Special Defense. Now, he'll go for a U-turn. Hoping, of course, that he was in a good position here. Had a sludge wave, that pesky guy would have died right there. And then, you know, it is what it is. And it's going to switch back into the Great Ape. And this time, I'm not feeling as cocky. Because now, I know that he knows that I'm not Scarf, so I can't stay in. And all I'm going to do here is switch out to Slowbro. Slowbro can take almost any hit from this guy without... Well, a really big issue here. Like, I don't necessarily have anything to worry about. U-turn will possibly hurt, which he goes for. So that's a very, very nice break, so I'm close my opponent. But, like I said, I can't take it, and that feels like Expert Belt right there, and then I was like, yep, yeah, that has to be Expert Belt. I really can't see anything else outside of that. That's definitely not Scarf, at least. Or it could be Scarf, but I, I thought that that was going to be Expert Belt, for sure. So, here's going to go for Toxic. I was feeling somewhat comfortable staying in. Um, should probably, I was predicting Will-O-Wisp with anything. So, I just go for Skull here. Basically, I just want damage, or rather, I was hoping for a burn. So, wapa, got the burn, of course. Now, we don't see any left or damage on the Rotom, which means that this will be a Chesto Resto. I really have no other reason to not see that coming. And for what it's worth, I'm, I'm just going to keep going at it. There is really no reason for me to do anything else. Actually, thinking about it, <laughs> I should probably... I, I think I actually switch out, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and switch out to Gate Thor goes Thunderous. And I naturally know I'm faster, so I'm just going to go for Psychic here again, because I am in the area of actually being able to killing it. I think the hit was basically, from previous damage, it, this was a 94% chance of me killing it. So I go for Psychic, and uh, you know, we already established that the game hates me sometimes, and this is one of those cases, uh, as you go for the Moonblast, which doesn't really do a whole lot of damage here. Now, I was debating going for Grass Knot here or not, uh, but a Grass Knot could possibly not kill it, because Whimsicott's weight is nope. It doesn't weigh enough, actually. It could possibly survive this Grass Knot. So I decided, alright, I go for Thunderbolt then. But of course it switches out uh, and go to the Crocodile. And that's unfortunate. But at the same time, um, I was feeling here that, you know, the way he brings it in, uh, he must be forced to stay in, which means he's probably going for Pursuit or a Knockoff. I can survive both. Now he goes for a knockoff, knockoff is pushing us down, it's definitely pushing us down, but we get a grass knot off, which means that he is very likely to sack off the crocodile now. And I also know once my Sceptile comes in, the Sceptile will take roughly 50% at max from this knockoff, and after Mega Evolution, 
that changes to 45. So um, he goes for knockoff and it gets slightly over 50%. So I was like, oh dear lord, it might actually be adamant. Um, but I go for the Mega Evolution. I felt rather comfortable saying I can actually still take this hit if it is a jolly, which it turned out to be. And uh, yeah, we, we don't live that comfortably, mind you guys, but we do kill it, which I feel is the most important part. And uh, at this point, I know Septal is now the fastest mod on the field. He has nothing that is able to outspeed it. And Septal can basically do massive damage now to everything on his team. Now, with that said, I have feeling that he's definitely going to have rocks here. So I'm just going to scout if I can do 50%. No, that one is specially defensive. I do not do 50% there. He gets the rocks up, so I'm thinking, fine. You know, I have, I have of course, Scissor, and Scissor can just defog them away. I know he's going to go for Brave Bird, trying to kill me. And uh, I'm just going to say that's this, guys. And I'm just going to stop the video a little bit. I forgot to put defog on this scissor. Uh, I don't know what went through my head when I was um, getting this mask, but I forgot to put defog and put roost over it. And the reason I'm telling you guys this is because I lose the game. I lose the game right here and now. Uh, there is no way of me of actually breaking through. I will lose because my two um, possible checks or you know uh, counters for Rotom are uh, well, they're dead due to rocks. So uh, I'm just gonna speed this up. Uh, there is really nothing I can do, like the game is simply over. And the reason I'm actually speeding this up is I feel I can't really contribute anything here. Um, I, I'll just let the footage speak on its own, but it comes down to this. Without Thunders or Septal now functional, um, he can just wall me out. And this was definitely something I, I was designing for. I wanted him to play like this, I wanted him like, I, I pushed him to this kind of area because I warned him to play defensively. So that was really the whole point. Um, that was the reason I, I had to play so aggressively with uh, both Thunderous and uh, uh, Septa at the beginning. Because I knew once I whittled down his offensive mon that could possibly knock me out. I I knew once that was gone with what was supposed to Crocodile and Whimsicott to some extent. I knew I can now start spamming with, of course, the likes of Thunderbolt and uh, Psychic and of course Sceptile were really, uh, really gonna be forced out but you know missing that defog yeah it basically means I lose and of course you know with all this said like I am still frustrated about this loss uh, but it's more because of course the obvious things like I, I feel I lose due to my own mistake which is something I, I, I barely can deal with uh, like I won't really deny that fact this that is something I I, I simply can't pull that off and uh, for what is worse, I do believe Danis were the winner here, but we re never really get to see <laughs> what it was building for. Because I, of course, will down both Funders and Septile in mind to scout, you know, with the damage output I can do throughout this game. And I was feeling I wasn't that good position where I exactly knew what this team was about. I could defog, I forced out the Skarmory to Infernape, which was something I was hoping, hoping to build for. And then throughout there, basically start pressuring. Now he probably have mag punch on his uh, uh, infernape, so w things would be get complicated. And I know I would be forced to use healing wish to some extent. And whether or not that would have been for the septal or of course the the funders had of course the time to build for. But like I say the septal is probably the primary mom for that due to Galade still being active. But at the same time, funders can outspeed it and has access to nasty plot. So yeah, like I said, we never get to find that out, and I. <laughs> it it bothers me because I wanted a better game with Danny. He deserved a better game. Hell, I deserved a better game, and I feel such a bad overlook from my side. Yeah, it can definitely make you pretty PC, like in a very bad mood. And like I said, I'm still kind of frustrated about it because I actually was <laughs> I got the game where I wanted it, and uh, at that point, since switching sister, I realized I lost. Uh, you know, how did I overlook that fact? Like, I recorded the team build the same day I was going for this game because, you know, I have everything figured out. Like, I had the team ready since Friday. Um, so, it's been basically sitting there for four or five days. And I, I didn't really, like, when I was building, I didn't really look that... I, I was taking for granted I had default. It was the whole purpose of unbenching Scissor in the first place. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, I have to deal with this. Uh... Hopefully, like, I hope I play, make playoff anyway, but at this point, like, and now, and now I have two stupid losses. And, and I say stupid losses because I, ah, 
I feel like giving them away. I feel that you know I build so well. I I get such a help, great help from the likes of a, a very good person named Ellis who helps me build these things too. Like we're juggling thoughts, and then it comes down to fundamentals of stuff I, I don't do, and that blows my mind. And it gets me in such a bad mood. Like I said, wow. And I, I, but like I said, for what it's worth, Danny has the right team, so it's not. I, I, he plays great. I just feel like I pushed him for where I wanted him to be, uh, to start doing the force plays, and I couldn't do them because the game was over at that point. Uh, it just blows my mind. Oh, what an oversight! But yeah, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's a rough loss. I can't really contrib on contribute anything else. Uh, I have to pick myself up next week and hope that works. Uh, we're going up against Eric next week, so th that's going to be a thing. I have no intention of losing anymore. And uh, I'm guessing I'll double-check things now, because uh, because if I'm not, then I don't have defog, right? Uh, anyways, you know, as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out, um, of course, Zanny's side of the battle. I'm sure he can contribute more than I possibly could for this game, because I am simply not in the right frame of mind of uh, making stupid jokes and like that. I, like I said, this was a stupid loss from my side, and uh, it, it's it's very hard for me of trying to define it more than, you know, this is easily, like, the worst kind of game I've probably ever had, ever, at least in Lee format. This is definitely up there. Um, <laughs> nothing against Danny. It's all me. It is all on me. And I think that's the worst part. That's why this loss hurts so much. So, with that said, guys, I want to thank you, of course, as always, for watching. And I'll see you next week against the Bristol Bidoof. And expect more Viking Renner rants after this. Until then, guys, take care. Bye.